morning, everybody. Welcome to Grandview. I am so glad you're here. I'm going to invite you to stand up. Let's sing. Let's worship God together. That's why we're here. Let's do it. It's your heart we're searching for. We want you. It is great to see everybody. Please have a seat. Man, I was gone one Sunday. It feels like I was gone a whole month. I am so happy to be back here. I picked out this video that you're about to see. It's a little bit longer, so hang in, okay? But it sets the table for where we're going today and over the next couple of weeks. It tells the basic story, uh, you know, the truth of God, the truth of, of God and how God's been working to reconcile and restore the world. It's about Good Friday and it's about Easter and it's about scars and I invite you to please watch this.
Amen. You like that message? You like that so far? All right. Well, just hang on because I'll unpack it even more. Again, I'm glad that you're here this morning. I'm glad that you said yes. It's on the second Sunday after Easter. Um, here we are. And as I mentioned a moment ago, um, I'm going to hit on Good Friday and Easter. Good Friday and Easter because they're so foundational uh, to our faith. Here's where we're, we're going, though. Is it uh, because I did have a Sunday off and uh, and I used that Sunday to worship with my daughter and and and, and uh, her husband, my son-in-law Chris, over in Waterloo. Man, it was awesome. Went to Hope City, her church, where Emily's a worship leader, and um and a big church, big, much bigger than Grandview. So I got really inspired and and was thinking about where do I want to go, church, in the next couple of weeks? Where do I want to go? And so um this verse that you're seeing on your screen, on these screens, if you're online, on your screen, this word of God by Jesus. Jesus's wounds we are healed and that's the jumping off point point. and if you've got your Bibles with you today I want to invite you to go there because this is amazing is that God spoke through Isaiah hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus showed up and and God said here's what's coming here's what it's going to look like so if you have your Bibles with you Isaiah 53 the word of God all the way back then Isaiah is talking about what Good Friday, and I keep pointing at the rugged cross that we have because that was out for our Good Friday several weeks ago, and we kept it for, for Easter Sunday, and, and, and when the chains came off, and so I'm still pointing at it, God talked about it and said this, who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up, now obviously he's, he's given a prophecy about Jesus. He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground, he, is, he has no beauty, no majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised, he was rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom people hid their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and surely he carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God smitten by him and afflicted he was pierced for our transgressions crushed for our iniquities <clears throat> the punishment that brought us peace <clears throat> was upon him and by his wounds we are healed we all like sheep have gone astray each has turned to his own way and the lord has laid him laid upon him all the iniquity of all of us this word of god is about jesus and it's about good friday it's this basic fundamental part of the christian faith about jesus the only one perfect enough to go and to take all the sins of humanity back then yesterday today right now all sin going forward upon him so that we can find forgiveness of our sins and be brought back into communion with God. Post-resurrection and after Easter, the word of God has been updated though. You see, the word was by his wounds we are healed, but here's what I wanna talk about today. These two things I'm gonna talk a lot about today, about wounds and scars. Oh, wounds and scars, wounds and scars. And so the update is that by Jesus' scars, we are healed. Good Friday, but Easter. The bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ demonstrated something that's really important. The bodily resurrection of Jesus, what we call Easter, demonstrated God's power to overcome anything, but to overcome sin, to overcome when we mess up, to overcome uh, when we trespass against God, but also God's power to overcome death and God's power. Easter demonstrated God's power to overcome Good Friday wounds, you know? Scarred for life. And so this is uh, uh, the sermon series for the next couple of weeks, Scarred for Life. That may sound like kind of weird or odd, but understand it like this, is that Jesus was scarred for my life. And he was scarred for your life. And he was scarred for your life online. And for everybody that we encounter, it's Jesus was scarred for life, for our lives. And so today we're going to begin considering this about um, how uh, God heals. And, and where we're going is it's going to culminate on April 28th. We're going to have a, a healing, a service of healing right here um, on Sunday evening, April 28th. Because God is still in the healing business. If you believe that, say yes. It still works. I know for some people it's like, well, that, I don't know, that's long ago, that sounds weird. No, we're going to talk about this because it's true. Is that God is still in the business of taking wounds, wounds, and moving them 
to scars. So that's what we're headed. You know, one thing about scars that I'm going to talk about today, and it, and it came up on the video, is that, you know what? Every one of us in this room has scars. And you know what goes with scars? A story. Right? Think about that. Every scar that we have on our skin somewhere has got a story. Right? And, uh, and again, I'll talk about that later. In other words, is that every scar helps us remember, which connects us with this table. And so Jesus instituted what we think of as the Eucharist or the Last Supper or, or communion and understand what this is about. It's not an empty ritual. It's, it's not something we just go through the motions on. Is that Jesus instituted this. He put this in place before he went to the cross and gave us these powerful symbols, you know, the bread and the wine. And we use juice here. We use non-alcoholic wine here um, in case somebody's in recovery program. We don't want to uh, trip you up, okay? But Jesus instituted this, and the big thing he told us to do is what? Remember. He said, remember. And as I said, that's what scars do. Jesus' scars, your scars, my scars, it helps us remember. And so that's what we're doing here this morning. We remember the story that came with Jesus' scars. He gathered with his followers in an upper room to worship, to celebrate Passover and this great act of God that God had done to deliver, to deliver his people, God's people from slavery to freedom. And so here's Jesus updating it. And so they go in the upper, this upper room to worship and Jesus is the host and he takes the bread and he prays at the very beginning. And that's what we're gonna do. I invite you, close your eyes and take a deep breath deep cleansing breath and <sighs> well, let me pray Lord God thank you for today I thank you Lord uh, that the sun came up and um, the, the, the air is warm and we made it here I thank you Lord God for this bread and for all the elements on this table I thank you Lord God that they point to that truth that we ask for our daily bread and you provide it I thank you, Lord, that we can be the church today. Even for people first time in this room, you're the church. We're the church this morning. So Lord God, bless us as we worship, as we give you our attention. Speak to us as we sing and pray and consider wounds and scars. Speak to us, Lord God. We're listening so that when we walk out of here today, we will indeed feel refreshed and renewed. In Jesus' name, all of God's people shout. Amen. Jesus then broke the bread, which wasn't unusual as part of Passover until he said, this is my body broken for you, given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And then he said that like scar part. He said, when you do this, remember me. Do this in remembrance of me, not in remembrance of a painting, not in remembrance of maybe some words in a book, but in remembrance of God's amazing act of grace, meaning he didn't have to do it, that God gave us Jesus on the cross, dead, empty tomb, resurrected, so that we can ask for forgiveness of our sins and be in communion with God. This is our gift. This is a, a, a happy thing. It's not a stoic thing. It's not a like funeral day. This is happy day. So let's continue with that attitude. Stand up and sing as you're able, please. Thank you. 
blessing. You're the one. Put your hands together and praise God. And I want to invite you to put your hand in somebody else's and welcome one another to worship. Introduce yourselves. All right, I'm going to invite you to uh, make your way back to your seat. And that's okay if you leave your seat. You know, uh, like, like, just like that little, um, you know, uh, little congregational education here. When we, when we greet one another, it, it, if you want to go all the way across the room, you can do that, okay? If you want to cross the aisle, you can do that. It's, it's, uh, that's what it's supposed to be, meant to be. Uh, once again, if you have your Bibles with you, um, I'm going to go to John. And the 20th chapter of John, Alec read this last week. Alec uh, filled uh, in, in last week and uh, did a great job, as always. Had a lot funnier jokes than I ever have. You all agree with that? Yeah. Don't be so enthusiastic about that. He did a great job. And when he read this very same passage um, uh, from John, I'm going to take it in a different way. But I know that um, uh, when, I, when I was watching uh, that, I wasn't watching online live at the time, but I watched it later a couple of times. And, and, and uh, Alec made a very good point. When he said, well, 10 of the disciples were together in a room, but Judas wasn't there. And Thomas wasn't there. And Alex said, I wonder what Thomas was doing. That's a great question. Um, as uh, somebody who shares his name, are you with me? Uh, I, think, I think Thomas was a realist. I think he was a practical guy as you hear unfold here. It makes me wonder if he said, well, I guess that's that. And uh, after Jesus has died and he went and said, I guess I better figure out what I'm going to do with my life. You know, like, what am I going to do to work or, or whatever? But he came back together with his brothers and that's where it starts, is verse 24. Thomas, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. And when the other disciples told Thomas that they had seen the Lord, he said, well, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where his nails were, <coughs> excuse me, and put my hand into his side, I don't believe it, okay? I don't believe it. So a week later, a week went by. And the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them this time. And even though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then Jesus said to Thomas, Here, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And then Jesus did many other miracles and miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that uh, by believing in him, you may have life in his name. Amen. Th Thomas, put your hands, put your fingers here. Put them here. There's a lot of different places and ways we can go with this long scripture of Thomas, right? Famously called Doubting Thomas, okay? Um, 
And, and again, Alec did a nice job last week of talking about believing and, and that truth that uh, we act uh, according to our beliefs. What we believe is what we do, you know. Um, but here's where I'm going to go. Scars, okay? Like right off the bat, why did Jesus even have scars? And why was this important? Why was this important for Jesus to point them out and have Thomas touch them, you know? That's where I want to start. And by the way, uh, Wesley, I welcome you to worship. I'm seeing you online. Looks like a good crowd over at Wesley across the river. We're going to talk about uh, the German food sauerkraut dinner during announcements later. But it's good to see everybody in worship over in Wesley. Why the scars? And why was it important for Jesus to point them out to Thomas? Well, here's a couple of answers. Because... Thomas and the other people in that room that day, the disciples, they needed to know for absolute certainty, for sure, that Jesus' resurrection was bodily, not spiritual. They needed to know that God brought him back bodily, not just like a ghost or a spirit, okay? So bodily resurrection, physical resurrection. And then instead of the Holy Spirit giving the alive Jesus perfect skin, you know, the scars remained, and they needed to. They needed to remain as a testament. They needed to remain the scars in the hands, the legs, the side where they put uh, uh, with the spear, you know. They needed to remain as a reminder of Jesus' mission and a reminder of his work on that cross. They needed to remain as that kind of testament of Jesus' work, his suffering, and yes, his death, taking all of our sins upon him. The scars were necessary. Now get this point. See, scars are healed up wounds. Scars are not wounds. If you agree with that, say yes. Scars, wounds. I'm not sure everybody said yes to that. Y'all with me on this. Wounds, wounds, uh, scars. Scars are healed up wounds. Amen? Amen? All right. Okay, that's an important point to get. Okay? Wounds are healed in the restoration of life and in Jesus' resurrection. It's this scarred for life, as I already said. Scarred for your life, scarred for my life, scarred for the, the life of the whole world and those who believe in Jesus Christ, right? The scars point to, and they remind us of the very foundation of our faith. I mentioned it at the, uh, at the opening. Jesus' scars remind us of uh, the foundational parts of the Christian faith, you know, that Jesus did die on a cross, taking all of humanity's sins upon him, so that we, including all of you here, those of you online, those at Wesley, that we can, in the name of Jesus, ask to be forgiven of our sins and be brought back into right relationship with God through that. And two, Jesus' bodily resurrection is a demonstration of God's power God's power over death, God's power over darkness, and God's power to restore, to give life, and to heal. And yes, God is still in the healing business. And so Good Friday, Easter, two fundamental important parts of our faith. Good Friday and Easter, it's like what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians. And so now I'm updating this and saying this to you. This is the good news that we have received. And this is the good news on which we stand, church, Good Friday and Easter. It's good news of what's possible. It is, it is the truth, the scars of Jesus, scarred for life. The scars of Jesus help us remember. They help us remember Good Friday and Easter. They help us remember that foundation and that his scars were for our life. And so that's that opening part of that scripture. Now I'll go back to this, what I said earlier. We all know about scars. Everybody in this room, and I've, all of you online, we know about scars because we have a few, you know? Maybe from childhood, maybe from uh, young adulthood, adulthood, whatever it is. You know, for many years, many years going back, way before I even came to Grandview, uh, I would play this game, this get to know you games with the youth, with the youth group, and I did it here with our Grandview kids a couple years ago. It's a game called Scar and Tell, okay? Is anybody familiar with this game? Okay, it's kind of like show and tell. And so we go around and the youth like, um, you know, where, where appropriate, if it's appropriate, they show their scar. Y'all with me? You know, like, no, don't drop your pants. Just tell us about it. You know, 
So, so the kids would go around, you know, and they, 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 they tell their story, and it's a way to get to know each other. So it's like, well, yeah, see this on my elbow? I had this bike wreck, and, and then, you know, I got this burn on my, on my hand, and I wrecked my skateboard. I fell out of a tree, and, and I got this scar where they operated on my, on my arm. And so the kids will talk about their scar, and I'll, like, egg them on a little bit, like, did it hurt, you know? And, of course, it's like, well, yeah. And it's like, well, did you cry? And, and the girls are like, of course I cried. And the guys are like, no, of course not. I didn't cry. I was seven years old, fell out of a tree, was bleeding all over. I didn't cry. I said, it's a flesh wound. That's a flesh wound. <laughs> right, okay. It's okay. They're youth. We love them. By the way, our youth went over with uh, some of our adult leaders. They were over in Chicago uh, area uh, over the weekend at a great leadership thing, and uh, we'll be hearing more about that uh, next week. But I'd play this with the kids, you know, and have fun with it. But go deeper. Is it what would happen? is that in Scar and Tell, Scar and Tell, I gave the kids an opportunity to tell the story, right? Because every scar has a story. Every single scar has a story. And I get it, as time goes on, that accident gets a little more gruesome, right? A little more dangerous, you know, a little more bloody, you know, a little more stoic, whatever. But again, see, the scars are the evidence that the kids survived. Does that make sense? Right? It's like the scars are, 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 are uh, evidence that they overcame something, right? Like, yeah, like, like warriors on the battlefield, uh, if they're killed, they can't show off their scars. If they have scars, they can, like, can point to those, right? So for the youth, they play scar and tell, and it's like saying, I overcame this, you know? And here's the evidence. They, they show evidence on their elbow, on their knee, on their whatever, their calf, saying, this wound healed. This wound healed. And that's a simple truth. I'm going to say it again. It's either a scar or it's a wound. Can't be both. Y'all with me? Say yes. Scar or a wound, right? And so the kids, yeah, we play scar and tell. We have fun. It's either a wound that's open, because I bring it back to us. It's either a wound that is open, and in need of cleaning and disinfecting and bandaging, resting, right? Or it's a wound that's healed and it left a mark. And we call it a scar, scarred for life, right? You know? You know, the thing about the scars, as I already said, I'm gonna go back to this, that we have stories that go with them. You know, we have stories. When we see our own skin, you know, uh, like if you have scars and, and, and um, you know, like you, I've got a number of them in different places, you know. When we see them, if we pay attention to them, we remember. That's how they work. That we remember. Or if somebody asks us about it, you know, they see a, a scar, you know, past time you got a scar on your neck, what's the story behind that? And you got this scar here. We say, oh, well, this scar here. Yeah, I learned that there's right and wrong ways to use a power saw, right? You know, I got cut my finger off. And um, I've, got a, I've got a scar on my, on my uh, forearm because my friends and I, does anybody, any of you guys, uh, people remember Little Green Army Men? You all remember Little Green Army Men? Okay, my friends and I played with Little Green Army Men all the time. And I put that red arrow next to that guy. That guy's, what, what, do you remember what that guy is? He's a flamethrower. Well, we thought it would make the, 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 the play much more realistic if we introduced fire, okay? <laughs> <coughs> and so what happens What happens when you light the little green army men on fire and you hold them up is that melting plastic goes, wee-oo, wee -oo, right, okay? wee -oo, right on my arm, right on my forearm, and burn down in there, right? And so, see? No, I didn't. Are you kidding me, man? It's like, nah. It's a flesh wound, right? Like Monty Python. No, because we're guys, if you don't know this, uh, women, uh, as boys, when we're with other boys, we don't cry because we have to be tough about it. Inside, we're crying, but not in front of our friends. Point, story. That's the story, okay? And every scar that you have, you have a story that goes with it, right? You have scars from surgeries. You have scars from accidents, from getting burned. You have scars from getting bitten, falling down, and, and whatever it might be. Everybody I'm talking to right now here and online, you have scars, you have scars, and you have a story. Now switch gears, because all of us here, probably all of us here, also have scars that aren't on the outside. You all with me? 
We have scars that are not on the outside, on our skin, but they're inside. We have scars on our mind, in our heart, our feelings. <clears throat> we have these internal scars that we carry with us. Most everybody has these internal scars. I've been thinking and praying about that a lot this week. Times when we've been hurt. We have scars from wounds that happened when we got stabbed in the back and betrayed or when we got beaten down or kicked down or gut punched and that's what life does right we have some scars inside from betrayal or from a loss you know a lost job a lost husband a lost wife a, a loss of, of of physical abilities we have wounds wounds that turned into scars from when we were we, we were went through a time our world turned upside down some people are carrying scars from what other people have done to them and they've gossiped about them and slandered them been lied to lied to them take advantage of them there are scars that people carry inside for some people when they were excluded when they were excluded or marginalized or ignored because of how they looked right because of, of, of they weren't in the cool kid club or their body type was different. There are people running around with lots of scars. That's what happens when we get wounded emotionally. When we get wounded mentally. And maybe even when we get wounded spiritually. Now understand, I'm not talking about paper cuts and hangnails. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about wounds and scars that like, like you got your feelings hurt, right? Or, or your team didn't win the national championship, okay? Okay, or, 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 you know, things didn't go your way. I'm talking about things that we've all experienced that hurt. You with me? Like pain, emotional pain, mental pain, even spiritual pain, mad at God pain. Why did you take my baby? Now this is real. It was real hurt for a while, not just overnight. This is not just, like I said, a hangnail or an owie. <clears throat> These are wounds that many of us in this room and online have had that they took a while. It took a while for those wounds to heal up. It took a while, and those wounds, when we incurred those wounds, however we incurred those internal wounds... It caused us to li live differently. It caused us to change how we live. It changed our routines, right? It changed what we were doing and what we were thinking as we, as we lamented and tried to make sense of things and we were distracted and we were out of sorts and all that kind of thing. We know that, that when we were wounded and in pain, it changed us. And it changed how we acted and how we received things. It changed things. As it began to heal up, it began to turn into a scar. It changed how we trusted people or the risks that we took in life. But it healed, hopefully it healed, and there's a scar. And so that's the way it works. And of course, we're at that point of going, okay, so what? Fair. What about that? How does it apply to me, Tom? Well, let's talk a little bit more about that. Again, the truth is we all have emotional, mental, and spiritual scars that we carry, Okay. And so here's my first question I want to ask you, and only you can answer this, all of you sitting here today and online. Only you can answer this. When you think about yourself and your life, is it a scar or is it an open wound? Only you can decide that. Only you can decide right now if you are walking wounded, and that's not an insult and that's not a put down. Only you know if you're walking wounded. In other words, it hasn't healed. You've been wounded and it hurts. And so there's that other part of the question. What is it in your life that is most in need of healing? What is it that you are most in need of healing? And you may not have an answer for that today. You may have an answer for that next week or the week after that. But what is it? Are you holding a grudge? See, many people have an open oozing wound of a grudge and anger and wanting to get revenge. It's an oozing open wound of, of resentment or jealousy you know, um, being afraid of something. What is it that you most are in need of being healed uh, from, with? What wound? What wound? If you're walking with one, and maybe you're not, but maybe you know somebody who is. And then part of that question is, if, if you got something going on in your life right now, and it's not a scar, 
it's not a scar, it's a wound. What are you doing about that? That's my challenge question to you. What are you doing about that? Anything? If you are walking wounded, and again, that's not a put down, that's not an insult. If, if you're, you're walking and you, you internally have pain, you may not express it outwardly because we're trained in our culture and society not to express it outwardly, right? Um, like, um, you know, how you doing? Well, do you really want to know? No, get to work, right? I mean, you know, we're, we're trained that way. But look, people all around us are hurting. But the question is, what are you doing about it? Anything? Here's what I offer. If you're walking with wound or maybe several wounds. Here's what I offer. Here's what I have, okay? I'm not gonna offer you a 20-step self-help book. I'm not gonna offer you psychology, psychiatry, any of that stuff. What I have to offer you is the living God. What I have to offer you is the gospel of Jesus Christ. What I have to offer you, if you're walking with the wound, what I have to offer you is Easter. What I have to offer you is I invite you, I encourage you to call out, to cry out, to pray for healing from our God. Our God who has the power to bring life from death and our God who has the power to turn wounds into scars. That's what our God has demonstrated. Still with me on that? Say yes. yes. I invite you, I encourage you, if you're walking wounded, I invite you, if you want healed, if you want, if you want that wound to turn to a scar, ask God. Involve God in that. Pray in the name of Jesus, right? Say, God, I want this wound healed up, okay? Like, that's how it works. I've done everything I can, God. I've done everything I can to try and get over this, this thing that's happened to me that I'm so angry about, so hurt about, can't stop crying about, can't stop waking up in the middle of the night, worried, get a stomach ache about. God, I guess maybe you can help me. Well, yes, he can. Second thing, if you're walking wounded, stay involved and get more involved in the living body of Jesus, the church. Now, that may sound like, oh, well, that's just a, that's just a gratuitous uh, appeal to, to show up. No, it's not. Because see, folks, if you didn't know this, let me tell you about how our God works. Is that sometimes God works directly in your life and to heal you and to, and to turn your wound into a scar. But many times what God does is God works through other people. Is that God works through other people to heal you of your wounds. That means that God works through pastors. And, and ministry staff, but it means that God works through people like in a small group, a cell group. That's why you're, oh, I'm always saying, get in one, find one. They're listed every single week on the back of your paper bulletin. Show up if you're in need of healing. Wound to scar. Pastors, cell groups, Stephen's ministry. We have a Stephen's ministry here. People who are trained to listen and to pray. A church friend. Stay involved. Get involved in the church. You know, that's, that's where God, there's a potential that God will, will bring some healing through another person. And this is where it brings it back to all of us who have scars. Okay? All of us who have healed, healed up wounds, to use the vernacular. See, we can't be afraid to do some scar and tell ourselves. Okay, and I want you to hear that. I just told you is that many times God will bring healing through another person, and I believe that that's true. I believe that God could use any of you here or online. If you're in a position, God will use you. And understand, just like this cross, you understand that this cross, not just this cross, but the cross that shows up in churches, God transformed that. In Jesus' time, um, it would be like if we had an electric chair in our church. This cross was an instrument of torture and death, period. It was a tool of execution. But what happened? God transformed that symbol, the cross, from suffering and death to a symbol of life with God. Good Friday, Easter Sunday. Here's what I'm saying to you. Listen. All of those who have scars from walking through the valley of the shadow of death. All of you who have scars, wounds that have healed, <clears throat> somehow, some way, you've prevailed, like the kids in the youth group. You overcame it, and you've got the scar to prove it. You've got the scar to say, hey, I, I, it didn't kill me. 
I had these wounds. They were deep. They were real. It was a wound of, of, of loss. It was a wound of, of betrayal. It was a wound of cancer. Didn't think I'd live. Okay, whatever your scar is, I'm saying scar and tell. Be available. That's how this hangs together. When I say if you're wounded, hang in and stay involved and get involved in the church. Know and be known. People aren't just going to come up to you right away and say, hey, let me tell you about my scars, right? It's being in a position for God to use you is what I'm saying. And so, church, we have to be available. We need to be available to tell the story. We have to be available to tell the story of the wound, but most importantly, how God healed it to become a scar, a scar for life, a scar for life that changed us. And I'll say this again. See, every Sunday, our focus isn't just on us. It isn't just on, uh, uh, you know, well, did the preacher give me anything I could use today? Well, it's not just about me and not just about you every week. You understand? What I'm saying is that we're the church, and we live in a culture that there are walking wounded all around us. There are people in pain and that are suffering from all kinds of things all around us. As I said, it may not be you, but it may be some people in your workplace. It might be some people in your school. It might be some family members. And so there's that call to action. You see, part of what we signed up to do when we became practicing Christian Christians, because practicing Christians are the church, when we're active and engaged and not just showing up and checking a box, part of what we signed up to do, and this might be news to you, we signed up to be in positions to be used by God to be Jesus in the world. Let me say that again to make sure you all get the equation. We said, when we said yes, yes, Lord, I'm following you, okay? For real. It's saying, it's saying I want to be in a position to be used by God to be Jesus in this world. That's what I hope and pray God grows because our world needs it. Our world needs it badly right now, okay? They're walking wounded all around us. It means, folks, you, me, we have to be Jesus' hands and body. And let me go further. Is that this beautiful call that we have upon our lives is to be Jesus' scarred hands and body. Jesus' scarred hands and body, offering light, offering life, and offering hope. That's what we have. And so may God help us to be it and to give it away. Let me pray about that, please. Lord God, you know us as we are, who we are. And Lord God, you know the people in this room and those that are, that are tuned online, watching through a screen or a phone. Lord, you know who's wounded. Right now, this moment, Lord God, we can't hide from you. You see it all. You know who's hurting and in pain right now. I pray in the name of Jesus that you intercede. I pray that you intercede and begin to bring healing in that person's life. I pray, Lord God, that you send one of us. Connect us to that person, Lord, and help us to be Jesus' scarred hands. And you work through us. I pray, Lord God, for that intercession. And I pray for all of us. I pray for all of us, Lord, that you help us to be real and to be honest about who we are and the way we're living our lives. And I pray that you grow us and that you change us. I pray this. I pray this for all of us in the name of Jesus. And we all pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we say out loud in one voice, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And we continue in an attitude of prayer as a one voice community. This communal prayer of confession, it's on the screen. It's in your bulletins. Let's pray in one voice, church. Lord God, we confess that we have too often become confused about what will truly satisfy us. We confess that we too often choose what we want and not what you want. 
Sometimes we live as if you do not exist or that you don't care what we do as long as we're happy. We confess that too often we obey whatever is most comfortable and pleasurable instead of you and your son, Jesus. For these things, we ask your forgiveness and we ask for your strength to truly turn around and live a different way. In Jesus' name and by his blood, please forgive us. Take a few moments of silent confession to God. I want you to be assured that not only is God still in the healing business, but God is still in the forgiveness business. That's what this table's about is that when we confess our sins honestly, openly to God, for real, claim them, say, I'm sorry, God, in the name of Jesus, forgive me. The word is you are forgiven. The word from God, and be assured, is that you are forgiven. Arise, shine, go forward, and sin no more. Amen. This meal is ours. Again, it's not an empty ritual. It's not a, a, a something to be sad about. Is something to be happy about. What we remember are those scars, those scars. Before Jesus got those wounds and then got those scars, he told us to do this. And he tried to help us understand what it was going to be like by giving us uh, material things, physical things to look at and see and touch and smell. At the end of the meal in that upper room, at the Passover celebration, Jesus poured out a cup of wine and instead of doing the traditional prayers and sayings and scriptures, he changed it. He changed it all. And he was pointing to the wine in the cup, and he said, this uh, represents my blood. And he went further and said, blood of the new covenant. Blood of the new covenant, a new, super, holy, powerful promise between God and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus said it's a sign of the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins of all people. Drink from this cup. Taste this as often as you want in remembrance of me. Scars help us remember the story. Jesus gave us this before he even got the wounds, before he even got the scars. And he said, use this to remember the gift that God has given you of forgiveness and of life. I'm going to invite those who are going to be helping me serve to come down at this time so I can give a couple of instructions uh, to the body here, uh, especially if you haven't come through and received the elements of communion. And, and I intentionally use that language, is that, is that you're, going to, you're coming to receive. You don't need to take anything. You understand? You're going to receive the elements, bread, juice, or gluten-free, if you can't do gluten. I don't like to do gluten anymore. Our bodies change. It's okay. Uh, there's gluten-free crackers. There's water, uh, whatever, whatever you need. And so here's how this, this, this works. Kathy, you and Craig okay today? You all getting along? <laughs> yeah, well, come on over here. I'll let you guys do this. <laughs> here's how it works. You're going to come to Kathy's <laughs> smiling <laughs> face, standing next to her, her longtime husband, yes. okay? And they love each other and get along. She's going to take a nice piece of bread and drop it in your hands, okay? And then Craig is going to be holding uh, the little cups, and uh, these are disposable, and so you take one of these, and after you take it, uh, the, the bread, the juice, you can, you can get on your knees on either side and pray. You can go back to your seat. You can, you can keep worshiping whatever you, you want to do. Over here, Lynn will do the same thing. She'll drop some bread into your hands, and I will have uh, the cups, and uh, you receive the elements. When you come down, if you need to grab the gluten-free cracker or the water, do that. Part of the reason, I want to be clear about this, that we do that next step of having the gluten-free for those that can't, their body can't do gluten is we don't want to exclude anybody from this table. Nobody's excluded. Because we believe that God's Holy Spirit works through these elements for God to reach you and bring you into communion, everybody's welcome. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to be a, a longtime attender. You don't have to be perfect. In fact, this is for all of us sheep who go astray sometimes. So I invite you with a smile on your face, come and receive these elements of communion. I 
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus.
God's Holy Spirit supernaturally brings us into one body, unity, in this moment. And so in unity and with one voice, let's, let's say thank you to God with this prayer of thanksgiving out loud, saying, Father on earth and in heaven, thank you for everything. Help me to never forget all that you have done, are doing, and will do for me. Sustain me with the hope of my salvation and a very real confidence of communion with you every day. Please lead me to live my life in testimony to your amazing grace and incredible blessings that your salt and your light may be known and experienced by all those I interact with. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. And we always say thank you to God with our hands. And then we take time to say thank you to God by giving our gifts back to God. That's what it is. It's a response to God. Um, So ushers, please be in uh, the midst with plates to receive your thank you. And I want to share some other things that are going on in the life of Grandview. I want to invite you to these things. The question of the week that's in your bulletin, and I hope you had a chance to fill that out using the little clipboard that's in every row. And uh, and I hope that if you're visiting today, you filled out a visitor card or you can fill out this tear-off tab. The question of the week has to do with... um, over at Wesley Church across the river in East Dubuque, down by the swimming pool, they're having their sauerkraut and pork supper. Now, in your tear-off tab, it says German food. And I decided to rephrase that because some people go, well, sauerkraut, I don't like sauerkraut, I'm not going. There's more food than just sauerkraut. Church, are you with me? You won't be forced to eat sauerkraut, though I don't know why you don't like it. It's great, great for you. But anyway, um, I want you to come to this. It's not about the food, it's about the fellowship. So take a look at this Saturday, next Saturday, April 20th, over at Wesley Methodist Church, East Dubuque, 4.30 to 6.30, show up. It's about the fellowship. It's about laughing and having a good meal together. We start reading Revelation chapter 14 today. I invite you and I encourage you to to read that every day. It's really getting exciting. We've got dragons and beasts and uh, Mark 666. It's uh, uh, good stuff, so do that. Okay, uh, last, um, the, the last CFX this school year will be Wednesday, April 24th. Wednesday, April 24th, so there's two CFX. This is for parents with kids in the home, and then we'll jump into some summer stuff. So um, even if you haven't come yet, show up. Love to see you for, uh, for starting at 5.30 this Wednesday night. I already mentioned this. I'll mention it again. Sunday, April 28th, 5.30, right here in this room will be a service of healing. What is that? Well, it's a very simple time of some songs and some music and some prayer and some scripture and then an opportunity to come down if you want and have myself or some of our prayer shepherds pray for you, lay hands on you if you want, uh, anoint you with oil if you want. Um, you can tell us uh, what, what healing you are after or not. Um, God knows. You just put yourself in a position. So think about it. Put it down. It's for you. It's not just some gimmicky thing. Uh, we are inviting God's whole Holy Spirit into this place to bring healing. Amen? So, so, so show up. You know, somebody said, we, you're going to do that on your birthday? Yeah. Yeah. Birthday is just another day once you hit 50. Amen? Okay. <laughs> this is more important. This is more important. And this is part of, of my role as being spiritual leader here. So I'm looking forward to that. Camp Bear Creek uh, work day. I have a wedding that day. I won't be able to participate. But church, I'm looking at all, all of you men and women. Uh, we, you need to sign up for this um, out in the gathering space. There's a place to sign up. Why? Well, this is our camp. It's down in Wyoming, Iowa. Our kids go there. Our youth go there. Our, our ad board leadership team was there. Um, this is sweat equity that we put into our camp. And, and we improve it. We make it better for our kids and our youth and for us to use. So please, it's fun. You get to know people. It's a, it's a work day. And we need to have that RSVP uh, so they can get the food right. Two other quick things. I see we're up against it. One, did you see the new bell tower when you came in? Anybody? <clears throat> Take a look at that thing. Uh, I am so proud of that thing. I am so happy with it. It is a memorial bell tower. It was paid for with memorial gifts. Um, it, 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 it's taken... Uh, 
almost three years. It started uh, when uh, Ruth Hodson died, uh, one of the saints of the church, and uh, uh, we had the bell from Picture Rocks, and I got together with Brian, and uh, the, the family said, we'd like to do something with music for, for Grandma Ruth, and I said, what do you think about a bell tower? And so Brian and I kind of started thinking about it and brainstorming around it, but we got busy, and uh, so I handed it off to Arvid Sale and said, can you be the champion and the tail twister on this project? And he was, and that's what we've got, and so that's some of the backstory behind Behind it. We'll dedicate it. There's, there's some more work that has to be done on it, but I'm really proud of that. Last thing is that our, our Prairie Park, uh, the Prairie Park that's coming, the Grandview Prairie Park on all this land out here, all of that got planted on Friday. So yeah, we, we are on our way. Boom. And we give thanks to God for that, and we're going to stand up and pray, praise God for everything. Let's sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Father, once again, thank you. I pray that these gifts are acceptable to you, that you multiply them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then I invite you to do what we do, to turn and look towards the back of the room. And if you're comfortable to reach out <clears throat> and grab hold of somebody's hand, two things that that shows. We are to go forth out of this room and be the scarred hands of Jesus at work in this world. Two, you don't have to do it by yourself. We're in it together. We're in it together as a church. So receive this benediction. May God Almighty go with and be with you right now. And may you know and may you experience the presence of God in your life, in your home, in your workplace, all day long. May God protect you. May God provide for you. God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Blessed be the name.